Hey everybody, um, so this should be a short tear down this one. Um, the, uh, there's a little story behind um, how I've ended up with this uh, huge great big box. Um, I was uh, driving over to Chester um, the other day because I was picking up a um, the next item to be torn down um, after this one. Now on the way there I actually drive past the recyclers where I normally get most of my stuff. Um, so I thought I'll just have a quick look just to see if there's anything in there. So um, I had a quick look and I did spot um, a particular item which I've seen them trying to sell for weeks. They've been trying to get rid of these. So um, I thought I'd just drop in and um, pick one of them up because they were just finishing around about the sort of time that I was going to be passing. So um, I dropped in, um, asked for it and um, they, it turned out that they actually thrown them away about um, last week or something so they didn't actually have it so given that I'd actually paid for it um, I said well is there anything else that I can have so I had a quick look through their their listings and I spotted this which had just finished uh, a few minutes earlier so I went I'll have this instead um, didn't really look to see what it was uh, which is how I've ended up with this uh, from the pictures <laughs> I didn't realize how big and heavy it is um, I realised when they, they it took two of them to bring it out to my car. Um, so <laughs> but there we go. That's how you end up with stuff like this sometimes. And you never know what a silver box might end up having inside it. Right then, what is it? Um, it's a SAN controller. If you don't know what a SAN is, uh, I'll explain that in a few minutes. Um, but I'm just going to go through exactly what this is. Um, and then we'll start taking it apart and I'll explain about what sands are and all that sort of stuff. Right, so this is actually manufactured by EMC Corporation. Um, this specifically is a CX3-80 um, SAN uh, processor. Um, so it's a huge, huge box. Uh, I mean, it, it probably weighs circa 45, 50 kilos. I mean, I can try and, try and lift it up. You can see how how big it is it's built like an absolute tank the uh, the whole thing is uh, is made from one and a half millimeter sheet steel uh, which has been uh, spot welded and riveted together um, so the, the main chassis is steel all boards and everything that plugs into it is all carried on the same uh, one and a half mil sheet steel so there's actually quite a bit of metal in this. So this would have been installed into a rack unit. Um, you can just see here the, uh, the mountings for the, for the rack. So this is the front and the back is around here. Um, on the front, uh, we, uh, we're actually missing the front bezel. Um, there would have been a plastic panel which went over there just to make it a little bit neater. Um, so there you go, you can see the front a little bit better. Uh, we've got uh, ventilation ports on each side. Um, the whole system is made to be uh, uh, fault tolerant and redundant, so everything is duplicated. Um, these are the power supplies, uh, one on each side. Uh, these black units are the cooling fans, so these plug in. I said the, these parts here are the power supplies. So that's, the, uh, that's one of the power supplies. And round on the back, uh, we've got uh, the power inputs for the two power supplies, one there, one round here. Uh, we've got the two um, processing boards, and we've got sort of auxiliary um, connections to, uh, which allow you to connect the, these boards to uh, local networks and things like that. These, all these ports are here are for the interconnections between this unit and the rest of the, uh, the actual system. So as I said before, it's built like a tank. I mean, um, literally, I'm sure you could drive a car over this and it'd be absolutely fine. Certainly jumping up and down on it, all that kind of stuff, it's, uh, yeah, it'll do that all day. And if you don't believe me, Right, so what I'll do, I'll just whip out half of everything because, um, as I said, the whole thing is duplicated. Uh, so there's two identical processor boards, there's two ident identical uh, peripherally thing boards, um, there's two power supplies, and uh, all the fans are the same. So I'm just going to take out half of what's in here, um, get rid of this big steel box, and uh, it should be a bit more manageable. 
um, what is a SAN and what would have these things done specifically in that, um, in that system. Uh, a SAN is a storage array network. Um, it, uh, it's a system that allows you to have a, a large array of hard disks um, which appear to the host system as um, just contiguous storage connected to different hosts at the same time. So um, if you had, say, um, a couple of servers, um, a SAN can be deployed um, with a large array of storage and then that can be divided up um, completely um, autonomously away from the, ho the, the actual host operating system. Um, so it's like a really, really massive uh, configurable hard disk. Um, so you could say, I want so many gigabytes to be used for this server and I want so many gigabytes for that one. And um, you can reconfigure things without, uh, without changing the actual host. So it makes for a really flexible um, system. So the actual unit as a whole would have consisted of um, arrays of hard disks, which would have been stored in um, a disk enclosure, which would be, again, another rack mount unit. Um, all the outputs of those would be then sent into a controller board in the back of um, that disk array enclosure, which then connects to um, the storage processor, which is what this is. This takes all the connections from, the actual, um, from each hard disk enclosure um, and brings them here where all the management is done. Um, you can connect to this over the network and configure it in you know, countless, countless ways. So this would then connect to the host operating system um, and to the host operating system it would just appear as a really big hard disk. So this actual unit, um, the CX3-80, um, supported eight um, connections to hosts um, using a fiber channel, uh, which was four gigabits per second um, through fiber. The storage capacity of this particular system in the day, um, if you were using 500 gigabyte hard disks, which you know, you've know got to remember this was a while ago, that would have meant uh, you can have 480 drives running off this system, uh, 500 gigabytes each, that would give you a total storage of 237 terabytes. So thanks to a good friend of mine, uh, Jonathan. Hi, Jonathan, if you're watching. He used to actually sell these uh, particular units and um, it's, it's hard to put a price on this particular unit that I've got here uh, because it was always part of the rest of the system. You, you had to buy all the other stuff to go along with it and um, it's, it's hard to actually put a price on what this unit actually cost. Uh, but an overall system um, with the disks, the processor and all that sort of stuff, was probably in the order of plus hundred thousand um, pounds, so and it and it could go up to half a million if, if you added loads and loads of discs onto it. So this was a pretty high end uh, bit of kit at the time. Right, let's take a look at uh, one of the storage processors. Basically, what you've got here is we have two Intel Xeon processors. Uh, we've got RAM, and uh, that then connects to these two boards here, which provide the fiber connections out to the um, disk arrays uh, and to the actual host. Now, there's no local operating system in this module or in the, the box. Um, the actual operating system, which is called Flare, um, is actually stored on the first six disks of the um, first array of drives, which is actually attached. So it boots off the, um, the array in effect. Right, this board I believe provides um, the fiber um, interface to the host through these two fiber, fiber ports. Um, I suspect this is going to be um, PCI Express just remodeled onto a um, a connector which is uh, more convenient for use in a rack. Um, so there's a bit of a processor on there doing something. There'll be some kind of uh, custom ASIC, I would imagine. Um, not a lot to see on there. It uh, looks like there's a couple of uh, local um, regulator, voltage regulator modules just there. These, uh, these fiber ports. That is a TL F8524P2BNV-E5 transceiver. Um, 
and that's the same. So this board has um, what looks to be gigabit ethernet and uh, more transceivers for fiber. Um, these are JDSU units. Um, they're gigabit. No, it doesn't have much information on that. Um, rammed full of uh, Broadcom BCM 5704CKFB. Um, those are going to be network fibre interfaces, I would imagine drivers. Um, got some more local voltage regulation on there as well. Nice big thick wines of copper on that. Uh. Right, let's have a look at the main board. Um, memory first. Uh, we've got Infineon HYS 72T6 4000HR-5-A, uh, 512 megabytes, PC 3200. Um, these will be EEC, sorry, ECC, sorry, um, and will be registered as well. Um, so makes it a little bit more redundant, um, resilient in a serving configuration. We've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those. So we've got four gigabytes of RAM. Um, let's have a look at the uh, processors. <laughs> so much for using the socket, eh? <laughs> um, it's, just come, it's, it's stuck so well to the heatsink that it's just ripped itself out of the um, out of its socket. Oh well. So this is an Intel Xeon. Uh, use my eyepiece on this one. SL8P3, and that is uh, 3.6 gigahertz, two meg of cache, only single core. Now these, um, I should point out these heat sinks, um, they seem to be all copper. It looks like there's some kind of heat pipe arrangement in there somewhere. Um, not quite sure how that's actually arranged, because it looks just like one big block of copper, but there's definitely something being taken out and then put back in. I'm not quite sure what that that is, but I mean, that's quite clearly looks like a heat pipe, but uh, why would you have it embedded inside inside the plate, unless it's, uh, it's one of the ones that uses uh, ammonia or something um, to you to work as a, like a little heat pump. Uh, it's possible, I suppose. So, um, yeah, nice lump of copper, uh, about 1.2 kilos um, each of those. Right, um, that is a PEX8532, uh, uh, which is a PCI Express um, switch. So, uh, yeah, it's hardly surprising. Um, it's interesting that um, there's a few um, stand, stand up um, voltage regulators. Um, you can see these ones here. These are actually labelled, that's uh, V plus 1.5, 3.3, 1 volt, um, CPU VTT, another one there, and uh, this one just here is uh, V plus 1.8. So um, looks like most of the voltage regulation is actually done on this board. So we've got a Murata, which are uh, well known for making um, DC-DC converters. Uh, we've got model VR102B150CU, and that is a discontinued product. Um, yeah, it's a DC-DC converter. It takes input voltage typically 12 volts and gives you a, an adjustable output voltage between 0.8375 and 1.6 volts DC and it is rated to 150 amps. So these will be uh, supplying the core voltage to the, uh, the Xeon processors. Um, so it looks like all of the voltage regulation um, is done on this board. So it'd be interesting to see that power supply and there's a, another one just here for the other Xeon processor as well. Um, I've got some Broadcom ICs here, BCM5705KFB. There's a network interface, uh, Ethernet interface, so they're probably gigabit. Um, so there's two of those. 
Um, so I guess that probably runs out onto that um, peripheral board which uh, allows this processor to connect to the local network um, with all the, the SAN interfaces here onwards. And up at the top here we've got um, wind bond something um, and we've got battery so there's probably the BIOS and everything up here. Right, let's have a quick look at this. Uh, so this plugged in the at the back, provided the um, local area network access to the actual storage processor for configuring. Um, so you've got uh, um, three Ethernet ports on here and two USB. So I would imagine this is probably PCI Express again, possibly. Got another Broadcom, which is a BCM5325. Uh, that's probably going to be another network. Uh, right, that is actually a, um, a 10100 switch, a uh, five port switch, so that's kind of interesting. Um, they've actually got a network switch on there. Another chip here. MC5282CVF66. Uh, yeah, that's a fairly beefy uh, little microcontroller with a, a RISC processor. Um, 80 megahertz, um, 16 general purpose, 32 bit data and address registers, uh, 2k of cache, 64k dual ported SRAM, uh, it's got an Ethernet controller um, and a load of other stuff, yeah whatever, um, and uh, a load of other little support components on there, not really sure what they're doing, I'm not going to go in and have a look. Um, we've got a couple of connectors up at the top here, uh, we've got emulator con, um, so that's some kind of emulator connection, I'm not quite sure what that would be for. Um, another one here called debug con, so some kind of debug port. Um, and we've got uh, another little pin header there called um, debug uart, just there. So some kind of de um, debug serial port. Right, let's take a look at one of these fan blower modules. Um, Foxconn label on there, it doesn't seem to be any part number. It's probably custom made for EMC anyway. Uh, but we've got uh, fiberglass reinforced plastic. Uh, we've got a nice looking uh, blower fan there, looks reasonably powerful. Where's that label gone? It's have a rating. 12 volts, uh, 2.3 amps. So yeah, that's going to be that's going to be noisy. <laughs> All right, so there's the blower module. Um, we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six connections onto it. So, oops, I've just bent the LED. Um, there's a fair few devices on there actually. A couple of big ICs. Um, some power transistors it looks like, or MOSFETs or something. Small fuse. So I would imagine there's going to be um, a little bit of communication between this and the main board. Um, obviously there's going to be power, which I would imagine is the, the red and the black. Um, and then there's probably going to be something that would feed back the speed of this uh, back to the main board. Um, there's probably going to be something that says um, I'm faulty. So the, the main board would know that one of the fans has failed and would flag up an, an error on the, on the system. Um, so there's possibly, so, there might even be a, a serial interface between this and the main control board um, because that LED popped out the front here, which has got a little um, exclamation warning thing on. So that's obviously um, a fault indicator. So they're probably they're probably monitoring the the, the condition of this on this locally. Um, so fault detection will be on this, uh, and then that'll, that'll feed back to the uh, the main panel as well as as well as uh, putting this light on. So there's probably a bit of communication going on. Right, uh, next up we've got the power supply, input 110 volts, 240, 12 amps, 
input maximum, output 12 volt channel 1, 42 amps, 12 volts channel 2, 42 amps, uh, 12 volts SB, that's probably standby, um, 20 amps, wow, <laughs> um, and 12 volt blower at 8 amps. And just like everything else, it's all um, nice big thick sheet steel. Right, um, okay, I, th I think what's, what's happening is we've got the power coming in, uh, filtering, rectification, um, this probably provides some low power voltage to this control board to actually um, control everything, because uh, obviously if I plug this in now it would, probably wouldn't do anything at all, but it probably would power this board up, um, waiting for the start um, and power enable signals to be sent from the main, the main board through this connector here uh, you can see the big big connections for the the main power and then we've got probably some control lines um, so that's probably doing some low voltage power supply and then there's a relay down just in there um, and that probably turns on the power to the main the main board and then this provides the, the bulk of the current to the uh, actual system so we've got two two separate switch switching supplies another one here um, we've got two two big fans down at the bottom. Those are deltas. Writing on some of these wires to actually tell you what they are. So, yeah, I think I'll probably keep these power supplies. To be honest, they might actually come in handy if I can get them to fire up. Um, having two channels of 12 volts, 42 odd amps each. That might be might be handy to have. So I'll probably hold on to these. Um, this is a separate part which housed the cooling fans which are uh, clipped in, the, in here. It's interesting to see that uh, there's these uh, veins on the, uh, on the back of each of the blower fans um, which close when there's, uh, depending on the airflow. So the reason why that's there is um, if you have a fan that's plugged in and, and blowing um, and if one fails and you have to take it out then when you pull this out, the pressure difference between the back of, um, of these vents will actually force one of these sets to close, um, so you don't lose your airflow through the main unit while you're changing the fan. I thought that was quite a nice, neat idea, um, just to provide these little, these little flaps. Um, it could also, also be that um, not all of these fans run at the same time. Um, the, given that this is 50% uh, redundant, then um, it might be that only two of the fans are running at any one time, so you'd need those, those uh, flaps in there to stop any backflow of air coming back and um, reducing your cooling. Uh, also on the back of this is the, uh, um, all the connectors for the um, the plug-in blades and um, the power supplies. Um, actually, no, the power supplies aren't on here. Oh, yes, they are. Yep, they're just around there. So the power supplies plug in there. And uh, you've got the two blades, with the processor boards, which plug in there. And these go out to the, the two sort of peripheral boards um, that we looked at earlier. So really, really big PCB that is pretty thick PCB that uh, must be getting on for about uh, oh, seven eight millimeters thick I think so there'll be quite a number of layers on there yeah I hope you found that interesting looking inside a, um, a storage processor from uh, what probably would have been a you know a hundred thousand pound plus um, storage array uh, from the uh, mid noughties probably mid to late noughties I would say right Thanks for watching everybody. Uh, if you liked it, hit the like button. Um, if you're not subscribed, hit subscribe. Uh, you're going to see lots more stuff like this, not necessarily IT related, uh, but anything that's electronic and interesting. Thanks for watching everybody. See you on the next one.